We've all heard the old saying, an elephant never forgets. But did you know that elephants are among the smartest creatures on Earth with social relations that almost seem human? Carl Safina is the author of Beyond Words, What Animals Think and Feel. He joins us now via Skype from Stony Brook, New York, for more on the pensive pachyderm. Carl, it's great to meet you. Uh, how are you doing tonight? Great. Great to meet you. Great to have you aboard here. Let me just start Thank by uh, reading a description that you have in the book of elephants. You describe them thus. Disproportioned, ears flapping, tough, dust-crusted hide, bizarre protruding teeth the size of human legs astride the world's most phallic nose. Such gargoyle grotesqueness should strike us as hideous. Yet in them, we perceive a vast intangible beauty at times so intense it fells us. We sense much more, much deeper. Let's start right there. What is the much more and much deeper that you think we sense in elephants? I think we sense that there's a lot going on in their minds. And I think that we sense that they are basically deeply peaceful and caring beings, which in fact, if you watch them for 40 years, you find out is exactly what they're like. Well, in fact, you've said that elephants, uh, in, in some respects, experience emotions in the same way that humans do. How do you know that? Well, I think you can see the workings of a mind in the logic of behaviors. So if you see uh, a baby get separated from its mother, for instance, you may see an elephant that is not the mother scream to get the attention of the mother. You'll see the baby acting stressed and um, frightened. And then you'll see the mother go and uh, regain contact with the baby. And then everybody will calm down. Hmm. And that's exactly what you would expect if they felt very similar to how we would feel under the same circumstances and they all knew their relationships to one another, which they do. This may seem like a perfectly bizarre follow-up, but let me try it anyway. If I were to look at a half a dozen elephants, I'm not sure I could tell one from the other if they're all basically the same size. Can elephants tell each other apart, and how well? Yeah, um, you don't know elephants very well, um, but you could tell the difference between half a dozen people and to elephants, other elephants are other elephants. They can tell hundreds of other elephants apart by sight and sound and family relationships because they live in family groups. So I, that's how they know. I guess I'm tempted to ask again, how do you know? I mean, there's stuff that well, you can you know observe. That because of, you know that because of experiments. People have played recordings of elephants from local groups from hidden speakers, and they see that local elephants either don't react at all, or they may move toward the hidden speakers because they recognize who's calling. But if they play the recordings of the voices of elephants that live many hundreds of miles away, the elephants will bunch up together uh, and act suspicious or fearful, and will probably turn around and put more distance between them and the strangers. Based on your experience and based on your conversations uh, with those who have watched elephants for four decades, can you come to a conclusion as to whether or not you think elephants experience empathy themselves? Well, I think they do because they show it. Um, if something goes wrong, they all show concern. If, uh, if a baby stumbles, um, it's, it's, its aunt will, um, will stop what she's doing and, and pick it up, or certainly the mother will. Um, but they know who is who, and, and they help each other out. And that has the same survival value for them as empathy does for us. And then if something really bad happens, if one is dying and it collapses, its companions will try to lift her to her feet. Um, if she does die, they'll stand a vigil for many hours. They'll come back many days in a row. They'll visit the remains months later. So that, that's how. I know that they're curious about humans because there is that passage in the book where you talk about a cameraman who got underneath a car to get a better picture, and one of the elephants apparently 
I don't know if an elephant can have a quizzical look on its face, but it certainly had a look on its face suggesting, wait a sec, that human's not supposed to be there. I need to take note of that. So I know they're curious, but do you think that they're empathic when it comes to humans as well? Do they have empathy for humans? Uh, I think to a certain extent they do. I, if, they know, if they know a human um, and they have good, good experiences with that human, um, then they act friendly and they, uh, you know, they, they show the same kinds of things to a lesser to a lesser extent than they show their family members, but they show that kind of thing. You know, they'll they'll greet the human, they'll they'll come over and want to be near, and, and those kinds of things. Okay. But very few elephants have have good experiences with humans. For for most elephants, the best they they can hope for is to have a neutral experience with humans. And humans have have caused a lot of a lot of pain and suffering to a lot of elephants, and a lot of elephants. Are, are currently very terrorized by humans. Well, that does lead me to where I wanted to go next, which was uh, some questions about the ivory trade. How has that affected, and the poaching of elephants that takes place, how has that affected their social structures? Oh, well, pretty terribly. It has broken up a lot of their social structures. So the, their normal social structure is a female leading a family composed of her daughters and all of their young and then when the males become adolescents males leave and they and they range around in loose groups of males not the same kind of tight groups with that the females uh, live in and the females live with their mothers or their sisters their entire lives usually a female loses her mother when she is um, many decades old. So when, when, a, when an older female dies, that, that is the leader of the family, we call the matriarch, when she dies, her oldest daughter is often in her 40s. Um, and they're not really ready to lead. They don't know enough. They haven't survived enough droughts and enough bad times to know how to do it until they're usually in their mid-30s. But um, now many are finding themselves without the benefit of their older family members when they're in their teens or in their early 20s and they're not really equipped or the entire family is so shattered that these little groups of orphans uh, form families. They come together and they form these sort of intentional families uh, and those don't work as well and we know they don't work as well because the survivors don't live as well, they don't survive as long, and they don't uh, reproduce as often. So there's a tremendous amount of stress and probably a tremendous amount of emotional anguish in the survivors, and, and that's well known and well documented. You have written in the book that you think that elephants can tell the difference between good humans and bad humans, humans who wish them well, humans who wish them ill, and again, how, how do you think they can tell? Well, there's sort of a couple of different ways. Um, for let's start with elephants in captivity. Um, most of the time that an elephant hurts a person in captivity, that person has hurt the elephant a lot leading up to that, and then that person has dropped their attention, and the elephant has uh, seized the moment and often made it look like an accident or something unintentional. Uh, but uh, a, a keeper who was very compassionate about his elephants uh, told me that he felt sure that there are no accidental deaths involving elephants. In the wild, um, elephants get accustomed to tourists who are neutral to them and they, they get um, a little more than accustomed to researchers who are there all the time. The elephants often come over, act friendly, um, and are curious to researchers who they get to know. And uh, people who belong to groups that hurt them, uh, certain kinds of tribes of herders who carry spears and, uh, and hurt, hurt elephants in confrontations over waterholes, for instance, and, and certainly people who are 
um, hunting or acting like poachers act, sneaking around in the bush, for instance. Elephants are very fearful of people who are acting like that. Understood. Carl Safina, it's good of you to join us on the line from Stony Brook, New York, via Skype. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.